Oh my goodness, what happened? Oh, what happened? Oh, I'm wearing all sorts of crazy things. Oh my goodness. I hope you're seeing this in your house tonight, folks. I don't know what's happened to my computer. It's just selecting random weird things. So, <laughs> maybe there's some that you particularly like. That's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, dear. I'm having too much fun, but, um, oh, I really don't know how to stop it. So, I hope it's not too confusing. Anyway, thank you for coming to my place tonight and um, tuning in for this night's um, Water of Life uh, online church. And I'm happy to be here again, of course. I'll have to get rid of these crazy faces. I don't know what happened there. It's all oh, I do like that purple moustache though, but um, I think let me just see if no, not that one. That's pretty cool, but this is the best one coming up, I'm sure. No, not that one. Come on, come on. That one there, yeah, look at that. That's what I'm gonna look like when I'm a hundred years old. <laughs> Oops, uh, into space already. Anyway, let me get rid of that. That's all craziness. I don't know how to get rid of it, but. I don't even know how it came up. Oi. There we go. <laughs> Safe and sound at last. You're rescued by technology. So anyway, we've been doing this little mini series tonight on um, on heaven, heaven's reward. And, you know, why should we get a reward when heaven is a reward in itself? And then we've been looking at this whole concept of um, what we build in this life we take forward with us into our, our new life in heaven and um, you know everybody's got a different idea of what heaven will be like and some people have got sensible ideas and some people have got crazy uh, fantasies and all sorts of ideas but um, I like to try and keep a little bit about what the scripture tells us um, and there's not a lot written about heaven and I'm, I'm sure I'm going to look at some more stuff later but just tonight we're just looking at this whole aspect of um, rewards and what we get why we get some of those things and uh, what are, kind of what are we going to be entitled to when we get to heaven you know what what can you expect when you get to heaven but you know one scripture i really love really well i think it's somewhere in revelation is where it talks about uh, the people when they were at heaven and they came before god's throne they threw their crowns at the feet of jesus as, as an offering of praise and i think you know we, we can get all sort of carried away with our rewards and what we're going to get and how grand it's going to be. But, you know, imagine it doesn't matter when you're in the presence of God and that, you know, the crowns that we would even receive, we, we would give freely as an offering to, to God in worship because, you know, he's the most important thing. Jesus uh, and God and the Holy Spirit in heaven, they're, they're the most important things. It's not uh, about who we are and what ranking we have or what responsibilities or the least or the most and all those sorts of things, how many crowns we get, um, you know, just being in heaven is going to be a wonderful thing. And I think um, when we go through life and we go through some testing times, some little difficulty times, it's good to just hold on to the fact that we've got this great reward ahead of us. And it's a promise to us through Jesus. You know, Jesus said, um, I have to go back to, the, to heaven. I have to go back to the Father so that I can make a place for you, a home for you. So we know that there's a place being prepared for all of us in heaven. Uh, not only a place, though, but a, a position, um, something that we will do in, in heaven. And, and so that's pretty exciting that, that God has taught so much about all of this. It's, there's so many big plans that he has for us. And, you know, life with God is so exciting. And, and it is always an adventure. So why would it stop on earth? And, you know, the adventure will continue. And I'm, I'm a, an adventure crazy dude and I love going on adventures and doing extreme things and I you know and I get bored if restless if I'm not doing stuff so you know heaven's gonna it's gonna be great because I'm sure God's got some great exciting adventures for me to do and you know I want to go um, you know start trekking through the universe and I want to do you know all sorts of crazy things but I'll have to see what God thinks and what God wants and that's the most important thing and when we get to heaven we won't really have much choice on what we do because um, we can't go oh no God I don't want to do that because that would wouldn't be right. Anyway, so we've been looking at these um, these crowns that, that are being there for us, and there's ways that we can earn these crowns. But we have to make sure that we don't fall into working for our crowns or working for our salvation. Because, as I mentioned before, 
while we while what we do in life has a value for the next life and we are judged on what we do in this life our, our works for the kingdom of god are judged um and so there is a reckoning of that but we can't work um, for our crowns and we can't work for reward we can't work for heaven because you know salvation is a gift of god it's by grace alone and, and totally by grace and jesus christ's righteousness imputed into us as we believe on him so it's not really about us but obviously there's this counterbalance that there are certain things that we can do uh, that will give us crowns you know and i'm thinking well you know I don't care if I get a crown or not. I'll be just happy to be in heaven, you know, and so excited just to get there. But when you start to weigh things up, you think, well, well, if there is opportunity, you know, um, well, why not look for these things? You know what? You know, let's let's start to have a desire for something more because perhaps having that desire will give you a passion to do more for God, not in the sense of serving and working and slogging your way to a career, but just to give you that sort of life and vitality that there's much more coming than we've imagined and, and god's got a greater thing for us and far beyond what we can imagine and i i get a little bit concerned sometimes when i, I look on facebook or on youtube and i i i listen to people's visions of heaven and um, i've heard other stories about people's visions of heaven and sometimes the heavenly vision that people get they seem to be so earthly minded you know they seem to be like a, a little house in heaven with rose gardens and and you know and i think Heaven's more than that. Heaven is not a copy of earth. Heaven's far beyond that. Uh, even um, John, when he had that revelation of, of, of heaven, you know, he, he was trying to describe stuff that he couldn't describe. You know, these angels and elders and beasts, you know. That, that wasn't a little cottage with a rose garden. That was an incredible thing that he barely could put into words. And, it's, and that's the way I lean to. You know, I lean to something extraordinary beyond our present understanding, beyond our present comprehension uh, about what heaven's going to be like. And I, I refuse to, to think that heaven's going to be a, a carbon copy of earth, you know, that we'll have a little house and we'll, we'll live there and we'll garden or we'll, you know, whatever. That's just boring. That's not heaven. That's boring, you know. Uh, there's so much more, so much more. God has so, I love God. He's got so much more all the time when we think we've, We've got so much, there's so much more. And, and, and certainly, um, heaven is this incredible reward and such a wonderful thing that's guaranteed for us because we have a deposit of the Holy Spirit in us. There's our deposit of heaven and our deposit of, of our assurance of going to heaven, our deposit of our insurance of salvation. And, you know, so it, it's a thing to encourage us. We need to be encouraged. Sometimes we, 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 we can get down and disgruntled or upset and, and we need to be encouraged to press on to encourage to run the race to get to the end of the race because you only win the prize when you get to the end and you only win the prize if you're you know in those prize winners you know the last person doesn't get a prize but in heaven with jesus it's a little different because you know every person and i love this every person will get some crowns i'm not going to say how many crowns which crowns they will receive but I know this for sure, that every person who gets to heaven is going to wear a crown or two. Whether they throw them at the feet of Jesus afterwards as an offering, I don't know. But And I don't know if you always wear a crown on your head because that could get pretty silly too, you know. So, I mean, these are a lot of these things are figurative about uh, trying to explain uh, something that we don't fully understand. You know, crowns are talking about responsibilities. It's uh, like a ranking and, 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 and a... And a showing what our life has been and what service we will have in heaven it's it's more that kind of thing than just a, a gold crown on our heads anyway so we talked about a couple of crowns last week and i want to continue quickly tonight um again so tonight we've got the crown of rejoicing the crown of rejoicing it, this scripture is found in 1 thessalonians chapter 2 verses 19 and 20. terry's typing it in for me she's so good She's my administrator, and, and she spells better than I do. And she writes better than I do, even though she's typing sorry. it on the... Oh, Good sorry. Morning. What is it? 1 Thessalonians, chapter 2, verses 19 and 20. And I love this. This is great. This is the stuff I love. Let me read it to you. For what is our hope? For what is our hope? 
or joy or crown of rejoicing? Is it not even you in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ that is coming? For you are our glory and joy. So what is this talking about? What is this crown of rejoicing? What is it? This crown of rejoicing is the soul winner's crown. It's, it's when we get to heaven and we see people that we've brought to Christ or had a part in bringing to Christ or we, 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 we pointed towards God in a certain way, even through a kindness or a, you know whatever. And we've helped a person along the journey so they could get to heaven. And when we get to heaven, we're going to see a multitude of people that we've influenced in our life. And, and those that we've influenced have influenced other people. And it will be like, that will be our joy. That will be our crowning joy. Because we'll be so delighted to think that not only did we get to heaven ourselves, but we have also managed through our lives to encourage and to bless and to help and to point the way to other people. And it will give us a great sense of rejoicing. For you are our glory and crown. Those people that we have impacted in life give an opportunity to hear the, the good news of the gospel or pointed a way to christ said a prayer for them in a time of trouble uh, prayed for healing when they've been sick a word of encouragement when they were down um, um, those are the people that we've pointed to, towards god and, and as they get to heaven that that's going to come back as a, this great crown of rejoicing and you know um you know, I'm not an evangelist and, uh, and, and I don't know how many people I've led to the Lord really, but I know through my life I've influenced a lot of people and continue to influence a lot of people. Uh, and so I'm trusting that when I get to heaven, you know, I'm going to be jumping up and down because I'm going to be amazed because I don't know what happens nowadays. I was talking to a lady when we were on holidays and had a good chat with her. I don't know what's going to happen to her life down the track. But, you know, if she's in heaven later on in life because of some of the words that I've said to her. Wow, isn't it incredible? Don't you ever wonder in your own mind when you've actually offered to pray for somebody for healing or you've, they've been upset and down and you've prayed, encouraged them, they're not Christians, and you've prayed for them, ministered to them, listened to them. Uh, you know, uh, what, when you see them in heaven, you're going to go, oh, wow, that's what really happened. You know, we've, we've ministered into people's life. We've had people living in our homes. We've... we've you know, and we think, what happened to these people? You know, and it's going to be so wonderful when we receive looking and understanding of what actually took place, how God uh, moved, and how we were just part of a, a group of people on a journey. You see, so salvation is not just one person, really. There's there is a there's a journey of salvation, a journey towards God, where many people. Uh, prompted by God and God arranges in his great incredible orchestra of life he arranges people to come into people's lives at times to help point the way and so you know we're all in this together so whether we are just full out evangelist and we know we yeah I've got that soul saved got that soul saved maybe you're not like that I'm not like that but I do know that I'm you know I'm there to point the way to God and, and I know I've helped and influenced many people so this crown of rejoicing, it's a, it's a soul winner's crown. When a soul winner enters into God's eternal presence and find many souls whom he's had the privilege of bringing to Christ, they will be to him the greatest joy and his crown of rejoicing. And, and truly, for those, those your people that you know, we've personally brought to Christ, it, it will be an incredible thing. But what about those people that you've also mentored and helped and disciplined and blessed over many years i mean when, when when you see them in heaven as well and seeing and see what their lives transferred into and the goodness of god on their lives and the reward that they receive man you know when i get to heaven and i'll get there before alex a and vila in the ukraine but you know when when, I, when they get to heaven and i see how god has blessed them and see what took place in their lives i'm going that's going to be my joy i'll be going that's my spiritual son over there Praise God, look what happened, look what God did, look how God blessed, and looks what, you know, I'm going to enjoy, that's going to be such a joy to me. It's like when you're a parent and your children do things well, you, there's this great sense of joy. And, you know, now we're grandparents, and, and there's that great sense of joy when we see our grandchildren doing, you know, doing well and enjoying life and having fun. We, we get such joy. So there's going to be this imagine, incredible uh, rejoicing in heaven, incredible rejoicing 
And I think there's going to be lots of laughing as well because, oh, look, you made it, you know. And it's going to, it's going to be a fun time. Heaven's going to be fun. I don't think it's going to be too scary, serious and scary. Uh, I want it to be quite a fun. Well, if I'm going to be there, heaven's going to be at least a little bit fun, you know. <laughs> um, perhaps I can help God a little bit. I don't know. Anyway, let's not get sidetracked, get too silly. So really this crown of rejoicing is really the, the, soul's, the soul winner's crown. But like I said, it's not just for the evangelist, it's for every person who's been per part of a process of bringing other people to Christ, of pointing the way through their lives, through their testimony, through acts of charity and all those kinds of things. We are all, uh, we are all light, light houses pointing to Christ, you know, and I think it's so important. But another part of this idea too, which I read in something else, was this, the crown of rejoicing will also be this, and this is what the scripture says, Hi, Nikki. I'm wait I can't wait when you're in heaven too. That'll be cool. We will have a party. Um, but you know, um, this other idea of this crown of rejoicing, when it says this in Revelation chapter 21 and verse 4, and I love this too. I, I man, I love the scriptures. They they just put something in my heart, and I go yes. So listen to this scripture. It's God, uh, good God. I'm just about to say God, good God. Revelation chapter 21 and verse 4. God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There will be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Well, I'll tell you what, if you remove all those things, there's, there's only left is joy and rejoicing and happiness and goodness, you know. And so we can see that there's this idea too of this crown of rejoicing is in the fact that you know, God takes away all the troubles, all the pain, all the sickness, all the sorrow, all the unpleasant things that we've had to cope with in life uh, and memories of the past that, that have uh, affected us in, in the, who we are today. All of that is going to be wiped away. All of our previous sins, all our, under, all our memories of sin, all, all the ups and downs and downs of life and difficulties will be wiped away. You know, I, you know, I often can sort of get into this quite a bit because, you know, especially when we're talking about uh, sickness and disease and things like that, because of, you know, Kerry being in a situation where she's in uh, chronic pain most of her life. Imagine when, when Jesus wipes away the tears and takes away all pain where she will wake up and never be in pain again. Never, never, ever, ever be in pain again. I mean, that's going to be rejoicing time. <laughs> I mean, she, she can jump a little bit now and she'll feel it, but in heaven she'll better jump and dance and run around. And wow, what an incredible thing, you know, to be free of death and sorrow and pain and, uh, and especially the memories, because we won't, we won't keep all those bad memories all our failings and sufferings will, will be wiped, wiped, wiped away. So I think that's wonderful. And you know, it's a crown for every saint. It's a crown for every saint. Because we can all rejoice in the, in the goodness of God in heaven. And, and there will be great rejoicing. I mean, there's going to be incredible rejoicing in heaven. Uh, and I think it's lovely. So, okay, that's the crown of, um, that's the crown of rejoicing that... And a lot of times people say it's the soul winner's crown. But I, I, I still like to think that, yes, but it's, you know, it, that's too, um, that's just for some people. I think this crown's going to be given to many more people that we, we haven't thought about. And, and we're going to see how our lives have been valued to other people in their, in their quest for salvation. I think we're going to receive this crown and we're going to be, oh, I didn't know I'd get that crown, you know. But that, and the fact of that crown of rejoicing because sorrow has been, um, eradicated <laughs> eradicated out of our lives out of our bodies of pain and sorrow disease and death are all totally eradicated unhappiness all those things totally no wonder we can wear a crown of rejoicing okay uh, a, a crown of righteousness a crown of righteousness uh, 2 Timothy I'll let Kerry snap that up 2 Timothy chapter 4 verses five to eight okay this is Paul writing 
for I am now ready to depart. I have fought the good fight. I finished the race. I have kept the faith. I love Paul. Uh, I'm a fan of Paul. I love his teaching. I like his writings. I love this. For I am now ready to depart. Well, I'm ready to depart too. I can't wait to get to heaven. Heaven is going to be unbelievable, fantastic and wonderful. I'm not about to kill myself to get there. But sometimes it's like, oh, I wish I could be there. You know, I'm ready to depart. Even the, although I've got so many things I want to do still. I'm going, well, yes, I'm ready to depart, Lord. Anytime you want me, call me home. But, you know, I still want to travel all around Australia on a motorbike. I still want to go... Uh, you know, um, what do we want to do in a camper van? We want to be um, travelling grey nomads. Gray nomads in a camper van. We want to see our grandchildren growing up. You know, it's too much in life to enjoy. But, you know, at the same token, while we are on this earth, uh, we are not in heaven. And Paul says, I'd rather be in heaven than here on earth. And, and here he says in this part, he says, now I'm ready to depart. I have fought the good fight. I fought the good fight, I've finished the race, I've kept the faith. And is, I mean, I could preach on that just alone tonight, fighting, finishing the race and keeping the faith. They're, they're, they are so important for us as Christians. If we want to get into heaven, <laughs> and we just get to heaven, we need to do these things. But if we want to receive our crowns of reward in heaven, then we, we need to fight the good fight. And we need to finish the race. We can't stop halfway through. We can't give up. You know, only the young people that win the race win the race. And we've got to keep the faith. We've got to keep the faith. And, you know, our faith in Christ, in our faith in the Word of God and our belief system is under constant attack in today's world. Uh, not only through social media, but on the news. And in general, uh, most people... Uh, I, I, the life see and meet uh, a, a big majority of those people are uh, anti-God not just not interested anymore but they're anti and we have this whole anti-Christ spirit at work in, in Australia uh, maybe around the world today maybe not in some parts because some parts are receiving great revival but in Australia I think we're, we're, we're cold hearted when it comes to the things of God and um you know, but we need, as Christians, we need to keep the faith. When we are, you know, getting a cold shoulder from people or openly re ridiculed, when we put our uh, belief system out there and our philosophy of life, we put it out there. Uh, you know, people don't like the Christian um, way. They don't like the Christian ethics. You know, they'll they'll kill us about you know um, homosexuality, uh, gender. Uh, abortion there's so many things that the world will just they want to you know throttle us for our beliefs in those things you know um, and yet we must keep the faith we must keep the faith we must hold tight our belief in God we must hold tight our faith in Christ we must hold tight on the the, the relevancy of, of scripture and the truth of scripture because so often and <laughs> ever since it's been written it's been under attack and will continue to be under attack but we need to hold on to it. We can't be uh, liberal in our interpretation or teaching from the Word of God. We must believe it. We must hold on to it. Uh, and this is what Paul's saying. And then he says this, And now there is a waiting for me, and now there is waiting for me, a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day. Isn't that amazing that Paul had this confidence that because he'd done what he needed to do in life. He'd ran his race. He'd done the, run the course. He'd done all that God had called him to do. He'd filled the commission that his life had been given. And you know, all of us have been given something to do for God. We've, we're all on, in a race. We're all fighting a fight of faith. We're all doing something for God. We, are, we all have something that God wants us to do. And we need to be people that have something in our lives that God wants us to do. We need to have a passion in our hearts for, for something for the kingdom of God, feeling that this is our gifting, this is what God has called us to, you know. Uh, we need that. And if we don't have that, the Bible says without a vision that people perish. So we need to have something in our minds and something in our hearts and lives where we feel that we're doing what God has called us to do and allowing God to, to lead us and direct us each day so we can fulfill what he wants of us 
and you know, we, we need to lay our lives down to him constantly surrendering our hearts to him and i know i do that often because i have so many ideas of what i want to do in life and so many great adventures for me to do and and so often i say god willing but not only god willing god i'm willing to lay this down at your feet this great project that i want to do I, I, i'm willing to lay it at your feet i want to do your will first of all i want to do your kingdom i want to seek your kingdom first it's not, you know, first have great holidays traveling around Australia. No, it's first seeking God's kingdom, uh, seeking God's will, and laying any of those things down and saying, God, if you want, I'm willing to let that go. You know, I'm willing to let that go to do what you want me to do. And, you know, we need to, to live a life of surrender. We're not here to just do our own thing. You know, when we get to heaven, it's not about just doing our own thing. It's about, did you do what God gave you to do? How did you, how did you handle what God gave you? and that's so important it says here anyway uh, so the the lord the righteous judge will give me on that day so paul's expecting this crown of righteousness now you do realize this righteousness is not self-righteousness it's righteousness through jesus christ and when we become saved we're washed by the blood of jesus and we enter into his righteousness so every one of us will have this and paul says that he says and not to me only, but all those that love his appearing. <laughs> all those that love his appearing. All those, all those Christians who love Jesus Christ with such a fond heart that they're just waiting for him to come back. They're so passionate about him, so living for him, that they're just looking for him. You see, Paul's reached that stage of life when he realises that his departure is soon to happen he's writing this in the in the last parts of his life uh, and he knows the journey that he's on and and he knows this journey that he was on was a god chosen journey for him he's com completely committed to that fact so even though he's been going through imprisonment and now you know he's coming up to dying and death you know he is he is content with that because he knows he's done and fulfilled what god has called him to do and he reflects on his life that he's lived since his dramatic conversion to Christ Jesus. Because, you know, he had such a powerful uh, tr transformation and such a powerful con conversion. Amazing, going from a person hating the church and, and, and slaughtering and killing Christians to be the person who loved the church nearly the most and was the most... Uh, important influential man I, I think he was the most influential person in the New Testament and the writings that he wrote and the passion that he had in his heart to live for Jesus Christ absolutely uh, I mean it turned his life around but he you know but he uses these three ideas to describe his life he says you know he has courageously fought a good fight he faithfully ran the marathon race you know, and, and, you know, it's all right talking about a race, but like I always say, you know, we're not doing the Pentecostal, you know, 100 metre dash. We're in for the marathon and marathons take a long time to run. And we need to be patient and we need to go with the ebb and flow of the race. We need to sustain strength and vitality and we need to keep going till we get to the end. Um, he was, he conscientiously kept the faith. And, you know, and in this way, he describes the call of God upon his life by these words, the fight, the race, the faith. They, they describe, in a, in a nutshell, the type of life that, that he lived after he was converted. And at the end of his life, he's looking back upon years of faithful service to the church and the people that he raised up, and, you know, his, his sons and daughters in Christ and and the churches that he planted and, and the you know the work that he did which which incredible missionary work you know wonderful apostolic uh, missions ministry that he had um but you know not only that he also has this sort of quiet uh, confidence and strength that his reward will be given in recognition recognition for his service it wasn't a thing of pride you know, you don't sense this sense of pride, but just a sense of this recognition 
um, of trust that he will be rewarded because he knows he's been faithful. He knows that. Looking back, he can say where he's been faithful. And there's that sense of just his confidence that, yeah, I'm going to receive that crown of righteousness. And this crown of righteousness will be given again as an indication of rank and authority in the kingdom of God. See, all these crowns, are, they're, they're, they're symbolic of um, the, the service that we're going to do when we're in heaven and the types of things that we will be doing when we're in heaven. Yes, okay. There's another scripture here. Um, I just said, you know, that this righteousness, this crown of righteousness was not from our self-righteousness, something that we produced. And the Bible says here in Romans, it says, being just justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. For, for we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. That it's Romans 24, but it's, Galat it's Galatians as well. So it's just in the scripture. But, you know, so we are justified freely by Jesus Christ and made righteous in him. And there's another great scripture here too. Actually, I'll give Kerry this one. It's Philippians chapter 3 and verse 9. Because I love these things. And it says this. And it says, And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. See, that, that crown of righteousness will be given to us. And every, every saved person will receive this crown. Guaranteed you will receive a crown of righteousness if you have given your life to Jesus Christ. You are righteous in Jesus Christ and you will receive this reward. So there are, you know, there's crowns that we know we're going to get. We're going to get a few crowns, folk. <laughs> but believe me, you're going to be surprised that what, how many you get. <laughs> Oh, I didn't know I would get that one. And you'll be oh, so excited. But, um, yeah. Okay, the crown of glory. How am I going for time? I'm going really well, actually, because I'm not going to go massive tonight. Because, um, yeah, just a couple of things to, ta to, to talk about after this, and then we'll finish off. So, anyway, the crown of glory. So, I think, let me look back to my notes. Yes. So, if we go back to the very first scripture that I read, when we say talking about the crowns, was in uh, Peter chapter 5. And um, really, verse 4 is what I want to speak about. First Peter. Did I say second Peter? Oh, I think I said first Peter chapter 5 and verse 4. So this is, a, um, this is actually the very first that I sort of started with when I started introducing the whole concept of crowns. And it says this, this is what it says. It says, um, I have to find it now. I'll go back to the beginning. When the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. Now, I said earlier, really early, and you might not remember, so I'll repeat it. And I don't mind repeating because it helps get it into our minds. But these, these verses here, particularly were written to the church elders. They were writ written to Christian leaders, to pastors, to shepherds, to people who were, you know, in, the, in perhaps fivefold ministry gifts, and certainly people who were in, in, in leadership areas of the church, may, maybe deacons and, 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 you know, administrations and those kinds of people as well. But this, this particular scripture, because it talks about when the chief shepherd appears, so it's identifying Jesus as like the, the chief pastor, <laughs> And when he appears, uh, you'll receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. And, and so this, this really, this crown of glory is really um, considered to be the, um, the shepherd's crown or the pastor's crown or those that were involved in that kind of ministry were given this crown. But I don't, I don't think that um, in saying that, that this crown is only to those people for those people, but definitely for those group of people, uh, if they've been faithful to God in serving God, then they will definitely share in this in this crown. You know, and, and 
I said before, there's various aspects of service this crown is given to. So there's obviously, um, you know, the, the elders or pastors and elders, um, people who have uh, partaken in the suffering of Christ. So those people who have been martyred or tortured or imprisoned, beaten for their faith. Um, you know, again, you know, shepherding the flock of, of God. And we can, we can pastor people without being pastors. We can shepherd people without being a shepherd. You know, we don't have to have the, uh, you know, the credentials and the, the stamp from a church to be those kind of people. We can still be those kinds of people. You know, having willingly and eagerly served as overseers, you know, there's that kind of overseeing. You might have been on a committee or, or a board or an eldership and, you know, um, you know, and so any, any, any person that's been used in, in really what we would consider church ministry, but let's, let's be kind of open about what church ministry is and let's not just, you know, brand it onto what we, you know, credentialed ministry, bom bom. you know, let's, let's broaden that a lot more than that. But um, obviously this crown of glory in, in these scriptures and this passage of scripture was referring to those kinds of people. You know, the crown of glory is for every person who feeds the flock. Um, the pastors, as I said, the apostles, the prophets, evangelists, teachers, ministers, and every person carrying out the Great Commission. Every person carrying out the Great Commission. What's the Great Commission? The Great Commission is go into all the world and preach the gospel. So you don't have to be a pastor to go out into your world and preach the gospel. You don't have to be a pastor or recognize you know, credentialed person to go overseas and be missionaries, you know. Uh, if you're fulfilling the Great Commission, then you come under this uh, whole heading of, of, um, hmm, of recognized people who will receive this crown of glory. It's the crown for the Peters and the Pauls and Johns, you know, those servants of God who went out and preached the gospel to every creature. You know, I mean, that early church. The, this crown is for, for fighting, for the fighting. Remember Paul said, you know, I fight the fight. It's for those remaining strong in faith, preaching the gospel no matter what comes their way. And, you know, more and more and more we're going to see people being persecuted as they stand up and, and preach the gospel or express even Christian belief and ethic. We're going to see, you know, that people are going to, uh, be standing against opposition and opposition is going to come yet as we hold on and we press through then we know that we will share in this crown this this wonderful crown, crown of glory but you know it says here uh, the crown and awards we are briefly considering are not reserved solely for ministers or preachers and they will be conveyed on many persons who have not been in the ranks so, you know, again, that's what I'm saying. We need to broaden our understanding and definition of who these people will be. But, but those people who have faithfully served Christ in various roles of even not so-called ministry, you know, not labelled ministry. You know, many, there's many Christian businessmen <laughs> who have perhaps not worked in a ministry but have sown financially into a church or into the kingdom of God, or into missions, you know, will qualify for this crown of glory. Many people have, have been in administration uh, in church life, or, you know, will receive it. And, and, and you know, um, really, there's so many people, because Jesus said, if you give a cup of water to someone in, in my name, you know, there's such a blessing there for that, you know, uh, you're ministering to him. So, I mean, you know, even the smallest deeds that we do, Will, be, will come into this heading of, of this crown of glory. There's so many functions with us serving God. So I don't want us to, to, to put it into a small box and say that, you know, those people will get it, but you won't, because there's so many ways. Um, there's a scripture here that says, um, he that receives or recognizes, respects and treats a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. You know, and so those, those people who supported pastors and prophets and ministries uh, will also um, share in that reward. You know, as the glory goes to the pastor and the church, 
People have faithfully supported that ministry by going to church and tithing and praying and being part of it and, and advancing that thing, advancing God's kingdom, will share in the glory. You know, this is one, one of the first thing about God's rewards is God doesn't uh, give out rewards stringently and there's no, um, he doesn't have a limited uh, edition of crowns, you know, set aside. He, there's unlimited giving from God and God's a God of generosity, you know. So there's, there's those, those things that we can look forward to. So let me just quickly um, list those again to you tonight. So we have the crown of life, which was the first crown. And these crowns are not in any special order and they're just what they are. Okay. So there's the crown of life. Um, there's the incorruptible crown. There is the crown of rejoicing. And there is the crown of righteousness. <coughs> And there's the crown of glory. So there's at least five crowns uh, that are mentioned in the Bible that we can receive when we get to heaven. And uh, so it's just interesting. And I think we need to um, constantly encourage ourselves to, to press into all that God has for us on this earth and to, to not want to um, slacken off in any way, but to encourage ourselves, inspire ourselves that, I want to press through to, to the end, like Paul said. I want to press through to reach my, my crown. You know, the crowns that God has for me in heaven, um, I want to lay hold of them. I don't want to, to abort my mission here on earth and miss out. Not, not in the sense of pride or ego or anything, but just the fact is I, I, I want my life to count for God. And I want, I want all that I do to count for his kingdom. And, and, and if there's stuff out there that God has for me, then I want to lay hold of that. And, I, and so I encourage myself and, and, and you know, keep myself on track to, to fight the good fight and run the race and, 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 and reach the end. And that's what it's all about. But there are some things that um, can come our way to stop us from, um, from receiving our crowns. Well, that sounds scary, doesn't it? But there's, there is things that will stop us from receiving our crown. Did you know that, Kerry? Mm -hmm. there's, some, there's some things that can rob people of what God has for them. There's many people who God has a destiny for their lives, but they never fulfill the destiny because they've never, they never encountered God or give their lives to God, and they miss out on God, God's destiny. There's millions of people today that God has a de destiny for. Every person, actually, God has a destiny for. But often people don't take it up and they miss out. So there's a way that we even as Christians can miss out on the, on the destiny that God has for us, on the call that God has for us, and the reward that God has for us in heaven, that we can miss out on some of those things. And one of those things is this. It says, overcome, be overcomers, overcome, lest uh, Satan causes to be unovercomers, if that's a word. You know, it's possible uh, that Satan can can rob us from so many blessings that God wants to give us. And in fact, I don't know if you're like me, perhaps you're not. And perhaps if you aren't like me, that's a good thing. But I know sometimes when you get incredibly blessed by God for some situation, it's amazing how the devil wants to try and rob that blessing away by causing a few problems or difficulties or just attack and, and try to take away that blessing that we've received. And, and, you know, that's what the devil does. He's jealous and crazy and mad, and he doesn't want us to enjoy God's blessings. He doesn't want us to enter into God's blessings. And so uh, he can come against us. And, you know, you know, wouldn't it be tragic if somebody has served God so faithfully for so, so many years, and at the end, towards the end of their life, they, they fall away from the faith. They they get defeated they get upset they have a situation that comes where they kind of give god away what a terrible thing to have fought the good fight for so long and get so close to the finishing line to then be tempted away or you know subdued away from the fact of who you are in christ and, and it happens to people that the, the, that the enemy tries to steal our inheritance there's no doubt about it, you know. He's always trying to steal things and, and, and rob us and, and kill our dreams and, and stop our connection with the things of God. That's what he tries to do. And so we need to be overcoming those things all the time. We need to be sober, watchful, and vigilant at, 
vigilant, vigilant, vigilant at all times. We need to be aware, the Bible tells you to be aware of the enemy's schemes. You know, when thoughts come into your mind and, and depressing things or temptations, be aware of the enemy's attacks and schemes and how he operates so you can, you can be overcomers. Resist Satan by steadfastness in your faith. You know, keep holding on even though you're tempted to let go. Stubbornly hold on and resist the work of the enemy. Stay humble and clothed with humility. You know, pride is obviously one of those sins. It took Satan out of heaven and pride can come into our hearts and, and rob us of our inheritance, of our reward in heaven. Submit to one another in the Lord. Be submissive to each other. Be, be open, be honest, be submissive. You know, we're not called to be rebellious. And cast all your cares on Jesus. <laughs> cast all your cares on Jesus. Sometimes this world gets us weary and down, yet we are called to cast our cares on him. Because, why do we care? cast our cares? Because he cares for us. Jesus cares for you so much. He says, come on, you don't have to carry that burden any longer. You don't have to carry that worry, that anxiety, that difficulty. Cast it on my shoulders because I'm able to carry it and I don't want you struggling. You know, it's like if you saw a little lady walking down the road carrying all bags of groceries and struggling, you'd want to go and take those bags off, off, her, off her and carry them home for her, wouldn't you? You know, because your heart would go out. And, and Jesus' heart goes out for us when he sees us carrying burdens that we shouldn't carry. And he says, come on, cast all your cares on me because I can handle it. I'm big enough, I'm strong enough, and I want to, and I want to rid you of that weight. And so there, there's some things that we, we need to look at as we consider these rewards and crowns in heaven. You know, um, we also need to remind ourselves also, this is so important, that it's the grace of God that gets us to heaven. And it's his grace that is abundantly sufficient to keep us in every situation. The Bible says in Deuteronomy, this, this scripture, the faithful God who keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generations with those who love and keep his commandments. He's a faithful God. God is faithful in looking after us and caring for us and, and giving us grace. Grace and mercy. Grace and mercy. Forgiveness and grace. God pours upon us all the time. Another great thing is, um, okay, so, you know, I've said, you know, there is a way that the enemy can get in to take us away from our inheritance and rob us, of, rob us of our crowns that we might have. Even if he could, he would rob us of our salvation. But, you know, if we hold on to Jesus and keep hold of him, he will be faithful to us. We also need to understand that God's will is being established and perfected in us. God is working on us and within us to do his good pleasure. So above all and beyond all that we accomplish in our lives, whether in uh, ministry or personally, it's the grace of God working through us, perfecting us, to do his good pleasure. It, you know, it, our ultimate success in life doesn't depend on our capacity. It doesn't depend on who we are and whether we can stand strong or, we, or we're weak. It doesn't really stand on our faith or lack of faith. It stands upon God's faithfulness. And God is more faithful to us than we are faithful to him. And God holds us so much tighter than we hold him at times. And, um, you know, I know that through my life. And I know God is so faithful. God is absolutely faithful. And he never let go of me. You know, so we can be considered so successful and so incredible. Uh, we might be, you know, highly charismatic, brilliant, you know, um, high achievers, you know, all these kinds of people. But 
you know, that's not so important. That's not why you get the crowns. You get the crowns because God is working his way in you. You have a destiny, you have a calling, you have a purpose for life. God has things for you to do and for his pleasure. <laughs> I, mean, I don't understand all that, uh, but that's what the scripture says. And, and if you do those things for God and you live your life in serving God, God is, is God going to perfect you? Do you notice how we, we actually, as we get older, we get you know, not as bad as we used to be? <laughs> There's a perfecting of the Holy Spirit in our lives and a, uh, it's some good things that take place in our lives and the maturing and the character building of Christ in us over the years. We are on a journey together um, and we're all, we're all imperfect people, but God works through us and is faithful to us and because of that, these crowns that we receive are absolutely beyond our control. They're just an overflowing of the goodness of God. So God will establish you. That's one thing for sure. He will strengthen you and he will settle you. Give you a firm foundation as you hold onto him. Wow. Wow. Well, that's pretty good, isn't it? I think that's a great way to finish tonight. Uh, so um, that's just a, you know, a little snippet of um, some of my ideas and, and some understanding, some teaching that I've had. Uh, and I, I guess really totally to motivate you and to encourage you to live for God. If, if, if I can only say some small word, it would be live your life for God. Do whatever God has called you to do. Find out what God's called you to do. Surrender your life, you know, to him all the time. When you're making plans for, I'm going to do this tomorrow and that tomorrow, I'm going to buy a house, I'm going to have this and do that. Surrender those things to God all the time. All your material blessings that you have, surrender them, lay them down at the cross all the time. Make God number one for your life. And serve him with an honest, open heart, a humble heart. Be faithful to him because he's faithful to us. But keep in the back of your mind, keep in the back of your mind, that there's going to be a day of reckoning, and it's going to be a good day. Don't let's not be frightened about the day of reckoning when we all stand in front of God. You know, sometimes we get so um, worried that um, we're going to be under some sort of judgment, and God's going to be very unpleased with us when we get to heaven and no start thinking more positively about it start thinking that it's going to be a good day it's going to be a good day when your life is finally uh, recognized for what you've done through christ you know and god's going to be the recognition of what you've done and he's going to know things that nobody else knows uh, and far beyond what you even know and like you know we all go through this battle in life about well you know how how, how have i how have i done how have I done in my Christian life? You know, am I am I doing good? Am I not so good? You know, but man, this day of this day of reckoning. It, let's look for the positive. It's a day of celebration. It's a it's a day of uh, well done, good and faithful servant. Come into the kingdom of heaven. Enter into the gates. Come in and receive your rewards. And here's your rewards. And God starts pushing onto you crowns and jewels and robes and you know overloading you with his generosity in thanks for your expression of life you know let's let's go to the positive and not fear the negative you know and so i, I just want to encourage you tonight live your life for god serve god with all of your heart love god hold on to the foundations of faith go through the trials of life um, and fight the fight fight the fight run your race and, you know, when we get to that time of, of, of leaving this earth, when we get to our, our time of dying, we're about to say, like uh, Paul said, you know, I'm content, I'm ready, and I'm going to receive my crowns. See, I know I've got some crowns in heaven. I know. I've got the crown of righteousness. I know, yes, I've got the crown of righteousness. I know that. Even if that's the only crown I get, I know I've got it. And let's be encouraged tonight. Uh, to live for God. So God bless you tonight and thank you. Um, I might look at some more things about heaven for next week. I'm not sure. 
I uh, hope to see what you know what what gets in my head and my thinking. So God bless you tonight, and uh, I'll see you next week. Bye.